Good evening, everyone. I'm uh, returning to uh, look at the S400 battery here. So, once again, we're going to uh, make two factions, Russia and the United States. And we're going to go back to the uh, same area that we were before. And this time I'm going to add the airport that Russia is defending. I'm going to turn on the relief layer. And I'm going to add I'm going to just max out the airfield on these PACFA fighters that for all I know are inflatable dummies and not really fifth generation fighters, but hey, they've got them there, so <laughs> if they say so. And we're going to put our S-400 radar the same way. And our S-400 missile launcher. Turn the radar on. And we had, last time we did SA, three SA-22s uh, defending the area. So we'll do the same thing again. So on relatively flat ground, We're going to see what happens when a carrier group comes in low. Does that make a difference and does jamming work as well while the enemy is low? Get our Ford carrier. Oh, and let's set everything to hostile so when they identify a hostile target, they shoot it. And let's turn on the relief layer for the Americans. So just flying low in a straight line would be somewhat stupid. I say we should take advantage of the terrain, but since we're going to be doing so, uh, oops, We're also going to use an E2D sentry to detect the enemy and at least detect illuminating radars, or I should say uh, the early warning radar. So of our Hornet strike group, let's get 24 of them armed with ARGMs. Now, I'm not sure if we really, I'm not sure if we can really pull this off with flying low. So 560 nautical mile range, but that's flying high. 
we're flying low, we may need to reduce our payload just a little bit. Because refueling it over an S400 battery is probably a bit dangerous. <clears throat> now another thing I'm going to try to do is if I notice that the enemy has ran out of missiles, I'm going to switch into editor view and move them to see if that makes a difference. So first I'm going to launch a flight of six aircraft. I'm going to send them, I'm just going to send them straight towards them. I expect these will be detected way before, yes they are. mainly when I would notice their radar it would look like I'd get a warning about when it's a hundred miles away. So let's have these guys return to base immediately. set the ready time back to zero because all right so we know the radar is there but we no longer see it so we're going to drop that contact I'll set this guy's time to zero I guess he was landing as I was setting everyone else's time <laughs> <clears throat> so the first thing we want to do is just have an AWACS in the air. to have it patrol relatively far out from the coast. If it sees something great, if it doesn't, oh well. And right behind it we're going to have these guys armed with J-SOWs, which have to be dropped at a uh, high altitude. So these guys aren't even going to try to come in to take out the stuff on the airfield until the enemy air defense network is completely suppressed. And we know something's there. So let's see what happens when I try flying low. So I'm thinking about that point, I'm going to come in and I'm going to start turning in low. And then these guys, I'm just going to have them skim right over the surface 
about there and there, about it here, they're going to start going low there. Let's just see if I detect anything. So it's been detected, but I'm probably going to lose it now. Now I have a feeling that this is going to go disastrously wrong, yeah, disastrously wrong, where my aircraft are going to run into the enemy at such close range that they may not even, they may be facing a. All right, so they see the radar. Now we don't want to get any closer than this, do we? It can't possibly be there, so I'm just curious what happens. Let's lower our range to 200. Now, as I suspect, these ARGMs are going to be completely off. And they better stay low as they're returning to base. Yeah, they've already got their radar, their uh, whatever active sensor they have turned on so even if they were these are in no way capable of hitting or are they because the aircraft now know where this radar is Just maybe these ARGMs will actually try searching for the targets. Now, I don't think they have a data link, do they? It doesn't say that they do, so I'm guessing that they don't. But I guess since they climbed up to 36,000 feet, they would have a pretty good idea where the radar is. So I'm guessing All right, so it looks like That radar probably has been taken out now. Or will be if. I wonder, is it too late for me to try turning this radar off? No. <laughs> too late. Wouldn't have made a difference. So now, of course, this 
this SA-21 has fired all the warheads, it's definitely going to be interested in relocating immediately. But I would imagine that in this case, these would be able to launch. I mean, these would probably be going in in smaller groups, but since they could shoot a standoff now, I might as well bunch them all up to make it easier. <laughs> Fire away at anything we see. Send our JSAO armed uh, Super Hornets to start attacking the runways and destroying their targets. Actually, that's going to take too long. I'm just going to have them attack. So it looks like it's still around. Not currently radiating. Now these are semi-active. But it looks like I've got 50 minutes worth of fuel left. So what I'm going to do is keep them in this area loitering. And I'm going to use these high flying aircraft to spot. So JSAO should start flying now. Now, I suspect that these guys would have also turned on their radar when they had lost this one's radar. This one's been hit so hard it doesn't look like it's got a whole lot left in sensors. And now let's just get rid of our ARGMs. And I'm sure they'll RTB any minute now. Just fire off their last one. And get out of there. Looks like they're trying to stop this, but that's a lot of missiles coming in. And a bunch of those pack fuzz that they allegedly have there are no more. <laughs> Although 
I definitely suspect that uh, they're not really there. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just delete this and re-add everything. I'm going to try again, this time with jammers. I think the important thing to take note of there is the fact that the S400 battery uh, definitely was able to get away and fire again another day. Oh, right. They get. SU-57, it's not Super Hornets. And let's set them all to reserve because they're not really being used. By the way, I, I think it's ridiculous that Russia would even put a fifth generation fighter that they don't even have battle ready there. And uh, thanks, uh, Jewel Rips. So let's add the uh, S400 back. Facilities. Got our radar again. And let's go with the 12 tails, because we like shooting missiles, right? I'm going to do one other thing differently this time. I'm going to keep these radars on because they're older and more expendable units. I'm just going to speed it up and let these guys return to base. And one other thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make a mission for this guy because it's driving me nuts at the fact it's going back and forth and just spinning around in circles. So we're going to call it AOX. And I'm going to assign these, sign one at a time, and I'm going to put active radar. So, let's drop everything. Now, the one thing I don't know is at what range are things going to be detectable when we've got a pair of jamming aircrafts running their day? <laughs> So 
So I'm going to try launching a strike here with a dozen of these super hornets. So that's about 48 ARGMs. And we, we don't need a ton of JSALs. I mean, the scale of the scale of the strikes I was just seeing were pretty ridiculous. And thanks for the follow there. To be honest, this is way over my head, but I'm enjoying it very much. If you play command, I mean, you'll get used to all these unit designations and everything. I mean, I know command, at least for myself, was a very overwhelming game when I started. It was, you know, it, it, I mean, it doesn't have a graphical user interface, so if you play any other game, you see what's going on. With command, you see sensors and whatnot, <laughs> and that's it. Now, since I did not serve in the Navy I, or the Air Force, I didn't see this kind of stuff ever in my life, so. <laughs> These are the JSAL guys. So I'm going to have them come in low, but then they're going to pop up towards the end. These ARGM guys and have them high for now, high for now, high for now. Out there is when I want to get them to go down low. I mean, the last test we did, we saw that these guys did not I'm sorry, these missiles did not really perform that well at 100 miles out. Aircraft were easily able to just get out of their way. But I think these guys are not going to be very effective at a low altitude because I don't see how you can jam over the horizon. Or I should say under the horizon. just don't see how that would happen very well. Now I wonder, these are listed as jammed. So I'm going to set 200 feet above ground level and have them engage offensively. These guys I'm going to have come in to about here, and then from there they'll pop up. So actually I'll have them pop up just before 45 miles, which will give them time to shoot at max range. I guess these guys should really follow them in a little closer. Yeah, I was in the army, so 
the closest I ever saw to this was Blue Force Tracker, and that's not even close to this. <laughs> it's just a blue uh, icon for a damn Humvee. Hmm. These missiles here being fired, I think are fired a little bit too far out. I doubt they're going to hit. That being said, I doubt that these radars care. <laughs> but I am curious what they see because they are jammed. So they only see a few missiles. Now they see more. I was in for six years. Uh, jewel rips. Infantry. any of these are going to hit because I think they were fired kind of blind. Uh, thanks, Jewel Rips. made a pretty big mistake. Fortunately, I think these aircraft, they have not. Oh, I know what I did wrong. <laughs> so trying to get out, these aircraft decided to go high to save fuel. I'm going to send them back down as low as possible because guess who's over the horizon now? However, they no longer see uh, the aircraft they shot at. I am worried they could, basically once they turn on their active seekers, it's quite possible that they see the jamming aircraft even though the launchers themselves didn't, which is dangerous. Also, as the jamming aircraft turns here, I don't know if its uh, jammers are most effective towards the front or what. These guys better get back down low immediately.
So now these, this last group is going to fire off their advanced arms. And let's make sure that they stay low. Uh, to be honest, with command, it, yeah, it was intimidating because of how different it is from every other game, but to be honest, just take one, uh, one day and just learn it as best as possible. You'll be surprised. You'll, you'll get a, you'll get a hold of it really quick. Just, uh, do the tutorials real fast, um... But don't be discouraged if you fail the submarine tutorial over and over and over. And there's a, a YouTuber, I'll put his name in uh, chat. Check this channel out, Belugan. Uh, his uh, tutorials helped me out a lot. Unfortunately, I don't think he makes them anymore. So I believe that these guys are basically going to be reloading and as a result I think that they would have already been moving by now. <laughs> these smaller point defense SAMs uh, are really no match for uh, this many missiles coming in. So I'm pretty confident now that all these J Sows are going to come up and hit. I actually find it funny, this mobile, I'm actually going to drop targets. And one of these aircraft is going to fire its J Sows on that mobile target that it sees. The others are going to fire, I'm just going to fire at the runway. We can use our imaginations where they're going to hit. <laughs> I am surprised though that as soon as the uh, S-400 battery started moving, they started detecting it. Maybe that was a mistake to move. But since they have lost all their radars at this point. These jamming aircraft are no longer needed as well. They can return. These guys can fly high because there's no more radars. But... <laughs> Not sure if these JSAOs would hit. they hit, I'll be impressed. Well, they did. Huh. That was unexpected. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to recreate the uh, Russian setup here. Order all these guys to return to base as soon as possible. What I'm curious about, since I still know that 
even though the S400 is uh, able to be overcame, uh, I still have very little doubt that. There would be a lot of times where the U.S. would not know where they are. They could be camouflaged. Now, one of the things that this game does not do, unfortunately, is uh, model camouflage very well, <laughs> or at all for that matter. So let's get that radar back. Let's set these radars to on. So what we don't know is what does Russia think or what Russia would do if they saw a bunch of uh, mall J's just charging towards them. And I'm kind of curious about that. So what I'm going to do... Wait for all these to land, good. I'm going to just equip a squadron of Super Hornets all with Mold J stand in ECM. Here's what I'm going to operate under the assumption of. If, if the aircraft uh, are detected as Mold J, they will not waste a shot on them. However, if they are detected and not identified, then when they're confident they can get a kill, they will start shooting. That's my assumption. Ah, uh, no, we're gonna actually assume that they don't know where they are, so I'm not going to add an early Burke and see how they handle Tomahawks just yet. Or should I? Yeah, actually I'm going to. Surface ship, Burke. So I'm going to change the magazine or the VLS cells on this here. Basically, all free spots to be Tomahawks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch these 12 aircraft with Mod J's. I'm going to launch two jamming aircraft to guide the missiles in, and I'm going to fire 79 TAC TOMs, that's at, those are uh, tactical Tomahawks, very uh, potent missiles, at this uh, airbase and see what kind of damage we can cause. I'm not going to specifically target everything, because that would be very uh, boring, but let's see what we can come up with. I'm just going to have these guys go to loiter speed. The idea is that they're going to be chasing in the Tomahawks. The VLS cells on this uh, Burke class are going to start launching stuff now. And we're launching a bearing only attack. Just going to fire all of our Maul J's at the same area. So, I believe the Maul J is basically just the regular mauled cruise missile decoy, with the addition of the fact that I think it has about 80 pounds worth of chaff aluminum pieces that come out and basically cause all sorts of havoc for radars. So, let's see that happen here. So our Tomahawks here, firing these small J's are flying high. So let's see what the enemy sees. Of course, they are in fact jammed.
The one thing I am going to do, however, is move these guys back and then forward. The reason for that is so that these molds, which will probably be targeted, anything that shoots at them will accidentally hit our growlers with living pilots. So what the Russians see, thanks to these jammers, is quite a bit less than <laughs> what the Americans see. In God's eye view, you see here they should see uh, this any minute now. Actually, that's interesting. So I thought they would see this first, but they're seeing the tack toms first. Looks like that was poorly executed on my part. Because who wouldn't engage these surface skimming vampires here? And most of these are going to get shot down before they even get close at this point. However, the fact this is reloading. means that whatever is left here for tomahawks, actually quite a bit, let me see here. Probably mostly going to hit. I don't think these SA-22s are all that good. this battle plan or the last one. <laughs> so the last battle plan uh, didn't involve 79 cruise missiles firing uh, one, uh, one million dollars a pop. This one a little bit of a different story. <laughs> but I believe harms are only like I say only, but I think they're only like $100,000. They're fairly cheap missiles, and ARGMs might be a little bit more, but they're not that bad. I think, uh, I think though, that uh, Tomahawks are likely to be a bit more expensive than most cruise missiles, but you'll find that the S-400 batteries that Russia was using actually cost even more. So even though these guys are jammed, they're able to burn through it some, some distance. So let's just watch things come in and hit. If 
But yeah, Joel Rips, if I were a taxpayer, I'm not so sure I'd want a war with Russia. <laughs> I mean, I am a taxpayer, and I also just don't want to die in a nuclear holocaust, so that would also be part of the reason for not wanting a war with Russia. <laughs> oh, so now I finally started noticing these guys, and they're very close. So if these can't be identified as mold jays, I would imagine that they would uh, definitely be shot at if there were no remaining missiles. And wow, still tomahawks coming in. So about 35 aircraft destroyed. <laughs> I, I would attribute most of that to flying in low and just firing more missiles than Russia can really counter with. Now what I'm going to do this time is delete all this. Also curious, how would the S-400 deal with uh, stealth aircraft? I think I'm going to do that one next. I'm going to take about a five minute break and then I'm going to launch this up again. I'll be back in about five, maybe ten minutes. <laughs> 